I set of examples and I got to page 4, part B, using the quotient rule. It was very rushed, I'm sorry about that. Right, let's have a look at part C. It might help you to see this as sine x all cubed. And now I can use the chain rule on it. So it's power at the front times by the bracket differentiated times by the bracket with one off the power. So I end up with 3 cos x sine squared x. There. Alright, let's have a look at this one. So D says, I've got tan of 3x squared minus pi over 4. I know the tan becomes sec squared, so it's sec squared 3x squared minus pi over 4, because I've done that in the previous set. Now, I need to differentiate that, and it goes at the front. So if I differentiate 3x squared minus pi over 4, it's a 6x. Please don't forget that. The amount of people who forget, because it looks tricky and they've got the sec squared, just miss off the 6x at the start. Right then. I've done all the examples. I'm going to nip back now and have a look at the the first principle stuff. Um, here we go. Right. Okay. Right, so I've got to think about... Sorry, it says I've got to prove that the differential of sine is cos. So, so this is prop first principles that we did last time. So if I use a point which is x comma sine x and I use another point which is x plus h comma sine of x plus h then the gradient will be a change in, x, change in the y values so that's sine of x plus h minus sine x all over a change in the x values, which is x plus h minus x. Right, now then. This here, use your sine a plus b formula. So your gradient will be um, sine x cos h add on cos x sine h. So all this here is the red box above it. Then I'm taking away a sine x and all that is over h. Alright. Now then, let's have a think about this. <coughs> if h is small, so if h is small, uh, I can use um, my small angle stuff. Now that's on the top of the next page. There. I'm going to use that. But instead of theta, I'm writing h. So down the bottom here, I'm going to, I've got sine x. Now then, this cos of h changes to 1 minus a half h squared, because that was the small angle stuff we did, plus cos x. This bit for sine of h changes into h. Then I've got a minus sine x over h there. Right. If I expand the brackets, I've got sine x times 1, which is sine x. I've got minus a half h squared sine x. Then I've got, well, oops, I've got h cos x. I'm going to put the h at the front. And then I've got the minus sine x. All that is over h. What's quite nice is that the sine x is cancel. I'm left with minus a half h squared sine x plus h 
cosx all over h. My h is cancel, so the h goes from the h squared, the h and the h. It gives me minus a half h sine x add cos x. So all I've got now is an expression for the gradient. What I need to do now is do the limiting part of it. So if I make h really small, so dy by dx is the limiting of h tending to zero of minus a half h sine x plus cos x. So this was the limiting stuff we did all, like it's pretty much when we started differentiation last year. Right, so the h, this h here becomes zero. So that part of it becomes zero. And all I'm left with is cos x. It's really messy. But what I've done is I've shown that if I differentiate sine x, I get cos x there. I'm going to stop there. There is another example uh, here. So if I give you a little bit of a clue, I'm going to use x and cos x. I'm going to use x plus h and cos of x plus h. I'm going to look at the gradient. So the change in y cos x plus h minus cos x over the change in x. This top bit here, use your cos of a plus b and see if you can follow that previous example through using the replacing any cos h's or sin h's with these and see if you can get minus sine x. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.